No, we're live. We're Ooh. live, Chris. All oh, oh, right, we're live. Yeah, we're live. <laughs> right, so I'm just getting the board. I'm getting the board. So is that in frame? Yeah. So good evening and welcome to At Home with the Fishers. 1929, two Ooh. notifications. <laughs> yeah, we're live. <laughs> Starring Nicola and Chris Fisher, RPT. And the blue light turner making shavings Deep since breath. 2016. Deep I have to put it all in. Oh, and it's episode 30. Woo! So, uh, yes, there you have it. And uh, it's funny, you know, it's such a mouthful saying that. Uh, and uh, every time... I really should um, shorten it. Every time every time we say it, we go, ah, deep breath, stop. I know, but I have to say it all now. Yeah, it's sort of like it's it's become... it's become. I think uh, I'd ruin it if I dropped that bit off. It yeah, would. It I would. can't drop it can't, No, no, no. And sort of like... It, it's uh it's sort of like part of part of uh the show when we say it isn't yeah it? Like, yeah you know. i've just realized you've got a bat there i have it's just turned round. not a cricket bat no a bat bat <laughs> um hanging it was facing a different direction so i couldn't see what it was but it's just turned round. so let's see who we've got with us tonight so we've got the Flaming Turner. Hi, guys. Maple Tree Studios. Uh, Brett Cunningham, T Plus G Making. Good evening. Uh, Christina Michael Hesseltine. Hey, all. Hi, guys. Um, who else have we got? Stace Makes. Hi, Stace. Leona Fay. Hi, Leona. Um, Dave the Wood Barber. Hey, all. Um, it's hard. Mark Smith. Wayne the Wood Turner. Evening. Um, who else? I saw some other names towards but Andy Pugh, Sneaks Wall Art, um, Knotted Pumpkin. Oh, oh, very, very topical like that. <laughs> um, and I've seen somebody else's name as well. Somebody new. Who isn't somebody new on the end? Keith Greenfield, oh. new face on the block. Hi, my mentor. <laughs> Baz Starkey, Claire's Crafty Corner, Hi, Baz. Larry LC Woodworks, um, Wayne Fisher. <laughs> oh yeah, that's 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 my uh, older brother downstairs. Actually, he's joined the chat. So um, yeah, I hope bring him up, Chris. Everybody. <laughs> I've, I've, I've said I've said you know uh, he can come up and do a very quick hello cameo. <laughs> Yeah, can hear him shouting. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, yeah. If if you don't know uh, the blue lights' real name, it's Scott. Yes, yes it is Scott. It is. Yes, uh, and we'll get into later why you you're known as the blue light. I think it's self-explanatory once the people get to know a bit about you and your background mm. and what you do for a living. But uh, we'll let you tell them later. Anyway, uh, we we also need to say hello to Henry. Yes, Henry, who's uh, our nine-year-old uh, nephew. He's downstairs. He's still on midterm for Halloween, so he's downstairs listening to YouTube videos, you know, uh, and loving it. So as they yeah. do, yeah. Hi, Henry, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, the blue light Turner. So we'll get to why you call the blue light Turner um, shortly, but. Let's start off, first of all, tell us why do you make, because I think this is going to answer a few questions as well. Mm. Yeah, so I started, I've, I've been a maker um, since a young age. Um, mm. I remember as a kid nicking the tools out of my dad's toolbox um, when we had a factory estate and we used to go and nick the pallets from there and make little camps and bits. Yeah. Um, but I really got into making um, 2014, 2015. Um, I worked for the ambulance service and I had four pretty horrific jobs to me. Um, and as a male, I thought it was wrong to speak to people. I thought it was wrong to cry. Um, so I bottled it all up um, mm. and ended up with PTSD and only got diagnosed um, after my mood swings got really bad at home and I nearly lost the wife and the kids to it. Mm. Um, so I was diagnosed, um, with PTSD, had all the treatment and needed a hobby. So I found the West Sussex wood turners through Ambly Museum, um, did some turning with them. 
and then a drunk New Year's Eve. Mark's in the chat. Um, Mark's my best mate. Um, and we decided we were going to buy a lathe and some tools, and off we'd go. So we bought, oh, I think it was a Clark something or other. It was a really ropey, mm. horrible lathe. Um, some cheap tools. Watched a little bit of YouTube, thought, yeah, we can do this. And then turned a square bowl and spent about a day sanding. Um, so Keith, um, when you join the Wood Turners Club, you get a mentor. So Keith become Minor Mark's mentor. Mm. Um, and he come around and he looked at the workshop and told us to throw a few bits away and give me some proper tuition. And yeah, the rest is history. Three years down the line, I'm doing craft fairs, um, doing commissions. Yeah, um, we've had a commission. And it's, <laughs> it's just yeah. my way of de-stressing from work. I can have a bad day at work and I will literally walk in the door, take my uniform off, throw my bag down and come out in the shed. And my wife knows that I've had a bad day. She'll leave me for a couple of hours. Mm. I might not even make anything. I might just come in here, chuck a log on the lathe, rough it down, make a big mess and walk in and think, do you know what? I feel better now. Yeah. yeah. So uh, why why do you think it helps you? What What is it about the process that helps you? It's it's different to work. Um, I, I quite like demolition. Um, I quite <laughs> like wrecking things. <laughs> um. So, yeah, just getting a log. Um, someone give me some lay land eye. And obviously, it's not very good for turning. Mm. But it's wicked for de-stressing. Yeah. I got a big... Where is it? I got a big roughing gouge. Um, where's the camera? It's massive. I think it's like an inch and a quarter in diameter. But I'll right. tell you what, for, de for de-stressing and just yeah. making shavings, it's brilliant. Mm. So... Yeah, and the other side of it is when you do craft shows, you get to speak to different people. Um, I'm looking at the moment at doing the AWGP tutor course um, mm. so I can maybe start doing some teaching. Yeah. But, yeah, it's different to work, and I can just come in here, get in the zone, and away I go. Yeah. Yeah, it's all about redirecting your focus and when you're at work obviously you, you can be privy to some quite horrendous things which again mm. we'll get into later and <laughs> it's yeah it, like you say de-stress forget about what's happened during the day uh, and refocus your mind and I, 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 that's a great thing just to put some you know uh, crappy old wood on your lathe and just <laughs> you could start off with you know something six inches in diameter and say right, I'm going to just rough this down to a matchstick. And then you could have, you know, some of your favourite piece of music on in the background, you know, a nice drink, not alcoholic, of course, because it's, you know, unsafe, but nice cup of tea or coffee. And I've got rough... coffee and some sachets. Um, I've got a kettle and some sachets from the pound. Yeah, shop. you could rough. <laughs> so I don't even have to go indoors. <laughs> yeah, perfect. And you, Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Just rough summer to death. You know, and then you go, oh, I feel much better now. And you've had a bit of a, you know, a rocking out in the workshop and a nice drink. And I, that's great, actually. I might try that, Scott, <laughs> with a, a crappy old, you know, uh, stump. Just just rough it down to something. You go, wow, that was so good. Yeah, that'd be funny. You know, I'd hear, hear all the, the bark and everything hitting the face shield and, dum -dum 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 and hitting my chest and my arms. And it'd be like, yeah, whoa, it's like a... Uh, a wood turning symphony. I've had to put a shower curtain up behind the big lathe when I do it because otherwise it just goes everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. <laughs> so now there's like a shower curtain that goes up and just keeps it all contained. <laughs> That's another good idea. So you, you've mentioned that you've had some interesting commissions. What sort of things have you been asked to make? So I've done two wedding bowls, one for yourself. Yay. Um I've picked up a commission today for a rifle site um, for a replica World War II rifle. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what else have I done? Some chair legs. There's a couple that found me uh, not long after I started turning. 
um, they're doing a house up down in Dorset mm -hmm. and they brought me back bits of the staircase bit by bit and I'd replicate yeah. them. So I've done the knobs for the null posts, the bits for the wall. Mm -hmm. um, they asked about the spindles, but I said, obviously, because of work, it would just take me so long to knock out the amount of spindles. Um, mm. So I think they're going to either buy them or look and find someone else. Yeah. But yeah, doing that was nice. And then seeing the finished staircase at the end of it, they sent me some pictures. Mm. That's really um, cool. So you've done a I, bit of kind of production turning when you've had to, have you had to do several things the same? Yeah, so all the, um, I don't know, they were like acorns, but they weren't. They were Victorian bits for the stop of the new posts. Yeah. I think there were six of them the same. Yeah. And then I had to do some bits that went against the wall. So that was a bit of a learning curve for me because I'd never done that. So it was like, how would you get the flat bit and turned one side? Mm. Um, so, again, that was watching YouTube. Um, well, what, and how I did went, you do that? Turn the whole thing and cut it in half? Well, that's what I was going to do. Um, mm. But then watching YouTube, I watched someone um, that stuck two square bits of wood together mm. with some paper in the middle. Yeah. And because I needed two, I did that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then split them apart, sanded the back, and hey, presto, I had two. I was quite impressed with oh, how right. it came out that, the first one. That's the easiest way to do it. Uh, and I think there's uh, an episode of the new Yankee Workshop where Norm Abram uh, is turning something for a – well, actually, he's, he's making a very elaborate frame, and it needs a couple of columns, one on each side. So he, he turned uh, two uh, – he turned, obviously, it's like a column, a cylinder, but the two pieces were stuck together with mm. carpet tape, double-sided carpet tape, and then you turn it, and then when you prise it apart, you've that's got That's a good halves. idea, yeah. That's the, yeah. Way, that's the way I'd do it. It'd be so much easier that way. Yeah. Mm. Because yeah. if I could it, if I turned something whole and tried to cut it perfectly central on the bandsaw, you know, if I was just, you know, a couple of mil off, It'd, it'd look horrendous mm. so that's the way i'd have to do it two separate pieces uh, yeah but yeah i'm mm. sure norm abram's done that I, I wouldn't have coped if it hadn't looked right mm. yeah i'm quite quite fussy that's why your bowl um <laughs> fifth time lucky <laughs> the, the one before ended up on the fire pit because that was my fault i went a bit too thin and when i was sanding it i went oh look i got a hole in the bottom <laughs> It's, it feels it, great. It feels it's great. It's absolutely Scott, beautiful, yeah. and you know, it's a beautiful. I like a challenge. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I've taken like... on this rifle sight. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's very interesting. That's the first time I've heard. You know. Uh, so, are you going? Are you going to turn it and then spray it black? So I'm still waiting for the guy to get to me. Let me know what he wants. Um, mm. I'm going to turn it. Um, all the metal I've seen the replica rifle today, mm. um, so that's all sprayed and done. Someone's made them or hand carved them, all the button stuff out of oak, yeah. Um, so I'm not sure whether I'm gonna spray it black, mm. um, which would probably be easier with the ebonizing lacquer while it's on the lathe, mm -hmm. or whether he wants to use the paint that he's used on the rest of the rifle, yeah. Mm. But it'll be cool to see it once it's done, it's mm. yeah, definitely, and as he said. You know, to get a real one, um, you're looking at a couple of thousand pounds. And there's people that make these rifles. So if I can do this one, yeah, mm, then there might be future ones. Yeah, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Are you going to do a video of making it? Yeah, probably. Now mm. I've got I've got a new webcam um, that I've set up today, yeah. a new headset that I've set up today, and rather than try and rely on the Wi-Fi. My wife thought I was cleaning the windows this morning. She was a bit disappointed when she saw I was running a new internet cable into the workshop. <laughs> <laughs> but I've got a few days off now, so I might get up the ladder tomorrow if it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> get the old window lean out. <laughs> the so... old-fashioned way, Chris. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what vinegar I've, got a I've got a squeegee and a, uh, the blade for doing it. It's what I was doing on um, when 9-11 happened. Yeah. I was window cleaning on the Granada TV shop in Hoteef. Oh, right. No. Whoa. 
you can get those magnetic things as well that you put either side of the window. Yeah, and as you're doing that on the inside, it's... Yeah, it's, I always think they look good. Yeah, it's I've never following. tried them. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we're not here to talk about cleaning windows. No, no, no. When I'm cleaning windows. <laughs> um, so you've been very involved in the maker community, and um, I know that you do a lot of different charity raising money raising things for charities and um you do a lot of making and you're very generous in the things that you do um what has the maker community given you so apart from a brand new load of friends or family even um you know when i was ill recently the amount of messages i was getting from the maker community mm -hmm. um christine and michael um, just appeared in the hospital ward and come and visited me, which was really nice. Oh, yeah, that's good. Um, meant a, a lot. Yeah. Um, I was getting more support from the maker community than I was some of my own family. Mm. Um, yeah. Yes, yeah, it's, it's meeting people. It's being able to, I make to de-stress and unwind, but it's being able to give something back. Um, so earlier on in the year, uh, we raised the money for Lily originally to yeah. buy the Upsy, mm -hmm. um, but we raised so much. She's now got the Upsy, um, a car seat. I think we ended up getting a, a finger probe so mum and dad can keep an eye on her oxygen levels and her heart rate, mm -hmm. a blender because she's now going to start trying uh, blended food rather than a peg feed. Yeah, And just to see the smile on Lily's face when she was walking down, mm -hmm. uh, mum and um mum and nan sent me a video they took her out and she was just smelling leaves something she couldn't do when she was in the wheelchair you know yeah yeah to see the smile on her face you know yeah we have to do that <laughs> everyone in the maker community that chipped in brought tickets and stuff yeah we did that as a community yeah yeah i think these are things that make it special yeah and you know individually you might only do something small but together you can make a massive impact yeah yeah it was an honor to be asked to contribute to that you know and uh no i mean how can you say i know the person that won that bowl chris all right <laughs> there's my mum and it sits on a welsh dresser oh. <laughs> that's cool but yeah i mean was... yeah how can you not be moved by lily's story no and, how, you know, so how is she doing now really well um mm. she's been ill um a couple of weeks ago ended up back in the royal alex which is children's hospital here in tussex mm. um but yeah she's coming on leaps and bounds and um, there was a picture of her in the paper the other day meeting um duchess of cornwall camilla um mm. went to the oh, special yeah, needs yeah. school that lily was at and she met her and spoke to her so yeah cool it's really good and yeah. we've helped men cap um my mum works looking after adults with land disabilities and they want to build a sensory room so we've donated some bits to them mm. uh, and i've just started making some poppy pens a mm. friend of mine um amateur photographer took a picture up on the south downs grayed out all the background apart from the red poppies it looks mm -hmm. a bit like the young girl in Shinder's list. Oh, um, yeah, that wears the coat, yeah. That re yeah, really sticks out. So I said to Carol, I said, can I nick your picture? I want to make it into a pen. And she went, yeah, but 50% has got to go to the British Legion, to the poppy appeal. And I thought, do you know what? What a cracking idea. Mm. So I've got a guy, um, Brett, I think he's in the chat, um, cast all my picture blanks. Um, I do a lot of pens um, with different wartime bits on to mm. raise money for veterans charities. Uh, actually, <laughs> there you go. Look. You I've been boxing some, some up. This up I've been boxing some up this afternoon, so they come in a little tin. Um, I don't know how well it's showing. No, it's because I'm trying moving that light. That's no. I'll, yeah. I'll put some stills up. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's it's a picture on the South Downs um, with the red poppies, and we've called it the South Downs Poppy Pen. Mm. And fifty percent of them is going to go to the uh, Poppy Appeal. So another lovely. way of helping our veterans. Yeah, mm. yeah. 
that's cool um so apart from all the things that you've made so far and you know this the, the bit where you like going in the workshop and kind of just turning things and what what do you call that roughing out kind yeah, of stuff yeah. what what sort of things do you really love to make magic ones <laughs> um i don't know my son is a massive harry potter fan um so i've had him in here i've done a few with him yeah um his birthday parties rather than the kids go home with a party bag they all went home with a wand which they thought was wow. cool yeah. yeah um but yeah i do a lot of wands and i sell quite a lot of wands um but just to see the kids enjoyment you know they go to warner brothers mm. and they can't have a wand because it's 40 or 50 quid for a bit of blow molded plastic yeah yeah whereas they can go to a craft fair and they can pick up a hand-turned wooden wand mm -hmm. that each one's individual for a fiver. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I really yeah. enjoy doing them and the picture pens. Mm -hmm. I know it's not wood, it's acrylic. Um, but being able to turn the pens and then donate some of the money for good causes, I quite enjoy doing them. It's mm -hmm. just the mess of turning acrylic that I don't like. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's funny, isn't it? And you know, you're having to stop every, you know, every now and then to sort of like pick all the, the strands of resin off and feel where you go in and things like that. So, yeah, well, I've it, sussed now that if I hang a Henry Hoover just above the lathe mm -hmm. and just have that on while I'm turning, it just sucks it all up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cost me a lot in Hoover bags, but it saves trying to peel it all off the mandrel. It does look good though when you've turned um, acrylic. It sort of it hangs everywhere. It... Yeah, it's like it'd be great for Halloween. It's not like yeah. acrylic webs everywhere, <laughs> you know. And if if you know uh, if you've got sort of like uh, everything set right and your tools are sharp and the lathe's at the right speed, you know, you can feel strands, you know, of uh, acrylic coming off in like long ribbons of tagliatelle, and yeah, it gets. <laughs> Uh, caught around your mandrel and all, all the spinny bits but yeah it, it's quite satisfying in that way turning acrylic you know uh, but it does pong <laughs> oh does it a little bit yeah. yeah 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 i don't smell it now with the new respirator <laughs> no no well, well, yeah that's so one thing we've not talked about is why you called the blue light turner for those people that don't know you so obviously working for the emergency services um a couple of people at work are like they'd seen people out there i think they'd seen the tartan turner and the tiny turner and they went you need a turning name i was mm -hmm. like i'm not doing it as commercial i'm not doing it full time mm -hmm. it's a hobby to me and they're like no you should be the blue light turner so we're like mm -hmm. oh, what do i think and so we did some photos i said to the wife about it and she went try it and it has it's just taken off now yeah there's a guy that did a caricature um at one of the shows i was at and it's got me turning but in the back of an ambulance mm. so he's like taking the stretcher out and put a lathe in there and then changed all the boxes so it's like headache stuff alcohol for medicinal use empathy yeah. limited or something it, it's brilliant so yeah, yeah. it's a great name yeah so so just to reaffirm folks uh, yeah, Scott is a paramedic. Uh, I'm a technician, Chris. Oh, you're a technician. Yeah, uh, Scott's Scott's a technician. So yeah, he's a, an ambulance driver, and he deals with, you know, sometimes the real sad side of life, and you know, uh, yeah, it can't help but you know affect you some ways, can it? But you know, without people like Scott on the front line, you know, saving lives life would be a lot harder wouldn't it and yeah. there's i'm sure there's countless people that are here today because of people like scott you know doing the job they do so mm. yeah well done scott Thank you, Chris. I think as well everything else that you do on top of your job and mm -hmm. um you know you're always talking about all these things that you're doing and mm. going down I, to I the can't sit still. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that's called ants in your pants yeah <laughs> No, yeah. oh, they'll, hemorrhoids. <laughs> they'll put stuff on indoors on telly, and it's like, no, I'm not watching that. I'll come out to the shed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, a lot of the stuff on daytime TV, you can feel yourself losing IQ points. Yeah, just sat there, and it's like, oh, what am I doing? 
Well, I think with something like making, you've got something at the end of it. Mm. You've mm. created something out of nothing. And mm. at the end of that process, you've got something tangible. Um, well, I was ill. Um, well, I was ill. My wife brought me some wooden puzzles, like 3D puzzles. So I think I've made an owl and I've made a snake and a mm. parrot. They're all going to get sprayed up. The parrot's going to become a phoenix for Halloween. No, no, um, no. <laughs> honest that's what it is um so yeah they're gonna meet the airbrush this week and get colored awesome yeah. yeah wonderful so is there anything that you've not made yet that you'd really like to make i want to have a go at some inside out turning mm -hmm. um i've seen obviously steve twidell's cube in a cube and a sphere mm. in a cube are quite fancy having a go at some of that mm. um and a table lamp I know it sounds quite simple and quite basic. Um, I've bought all the bits. They're all here in the workshop. Yeah. But I've just, I've not got around to it. I've got a cupboard in the corner. Mm. Um, one of my friends was around the other day. And we were saying that I should do a series of video of turn from what's in the cupboard. Because there's stuff that I've bought and just, there's sea urchin shells in there. And there's some glass baubles that I bought off Emma Turner, um, mm. the tiny Turner. Yeah. And they're just sat in the cupboard. There's probably enough in there to do like a TV series for so long of <laughs> <laughs> take say out of the cupboard and turn it. <laughs> so yeah, no, a table lamp. I'd like to do a table lamp for indoors. Yeah. Um, and some inside out, just something different. Bowls yeah. are, you know, they, they can be satisfying doing different shaped bowls, but once you've done loads of different bowls, it'd be nice to do something different. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think that, you know, it's it's nice watching someone do a bowl or a beautiful goblet, but it's nice seeing something different as well and mm. um, seeing someone just come up with a different take on an idea. Um, I like that. I like seeing different stuff. Um, there's somebody here, Love Angel. She says she loves people like you. Saved my life when I had a heart attack in August. Mm. So, uh, yeah, nice comment. And it's, it's not just the front line now. I think it's the way medicine's progressed. You know, before, if you had someone having a heart attack, you'd take them to A&E. A&E, they'd then be seen there, so there was a delay there. And then eventually the cardiologist used to come, whereas nowadays we'll turn up, we're doing ECG, they're having a heart attack, and working in London within 20 minutes we can have them on the table in the cath lab and mm. they're having the surgery to clear the blockage that's causing the heart attack mm. so it's not just the ambulance service i think it's the whole medicine how that's coming on in general yeah yeah, yeah. but i do think um you know if you get somebody good um i know when my dad was ill we had an ambulance crew came here and they were absolutely exceptional um they really were brilliant and mm. um you know it made a huge difference to to me um so yeah it's and i know it's sort of you know a combined effort but um yeah they, they were extremely good and mm. i think it does count for a lot i um, always try to go further you know in the job if i go to an elderly person that's fallen I won't just pick them up, make sure they're all right. I'll go and make them a cup of tea. If mm. they haven't got any milk, then we'll run around the shop and buy them a pint of milk. Mm. It's just, it's going that little bit extra, and that's what people yeah. remember, and that's yeah, what yeah. gives them the positive experience. Yeah. Yeah, that's true so much, isn't it, in life? Yeah, and there's a lot of, lot of aspects of life where that is missing. Just what those nice little things. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and what we've been talking about, you know, about people, you know, that I think the way to save the planet starts with people being nice and let's get things right at the very, very root of everything, mm. which is us as a society and as, you know, different cultures just all getting on, mm. you know, and let's, mm. let's, you know. Well, if, it's, it's down to these individual interactions, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And 
it's just starting with the people that you you mm. meet on a day-to-day -day basis yeah. and yeah and i, I mm. found that last night i went to the uh, neeston temple in london for diwali celebrations mm. um so the temple was open um massive hindu community but it was open to everyone so you could be walking down the street mm. and you could walk into the diwali village you could get food with people um yeah. You could go into the temple and look around and they must have spent thousands of pounds on fireworks but again rather than a lot of commercial fireworks you paid to get in mm. everyone was welcome and it was really mm -hmm. nice cult just to see different culture yeah and, yeah you know there used to be a time you'd know all your neighbors or people down the street but mm -hmm. you don't know who lives three doors down nowadays yeah yeah, yeah. And I think that's sort of a knock-on effect from everybody working so far away from home as well. So you can be out from the crack of dawn till early evening and people don't see each other. There's there's so many different factors, aren't there? And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, um, I think a few things need to change mm. really in, you know, how we work and how we live. Yeah. Um, so... Tell us something that the maker community doesn't know about you. What is that? I'm quite open, so there's a lot. <laughs> Do you know everybody says that? Do you know what? There is something. Um, and a lot of people know that I started turning and making through PTSD. Mm. Um, but when I was uh, diagnosed with PTSD, I was also diagnosed with Asperger's. Mm. Um and that come totally out of the blue and it was like hmm, on the autistic spectrum um but when we looked back um when i was probably i think it's like nine or ten so year three year four i was actually in a children's home oh. and it was because or i was a naughty behaved child um and different medications and stuff but when you look they didn't diagnose ADHD, Asperger's and stuff like that back then. And it also explains some of my OCDs. So in the workshop, I've got tools on the wall, but I've drawn around them. So I know that's where that tool goes. Yeah, yeah. Or at work, I have to have the fold on the sheet on the stretcher a certain side. So it's pointing <laughs> into the ambulance where people see. So you haven't got two ends of a sheet together. Mm. Um. So, yeah. I was diagnosed with Asperger's about, about three years ago now. Right. So how how does it sort of impact you on a day to day basis? Apart from I know you said about you know the sheets and things like that, but yeah, the OCD. Um, I get a short temper at times. I get easily frustrated if stuff doesn't go the way I want it to go. Um, or if I'm so I'm making something it and it's not right, I'll throw it in the fire pit. Mm. <laughs> you know, it might be a couple of mil out and it might look fine. Someone go, oh, what have you done that for? Yeah. I'm not happy with it. So yeah. It goes, Listen. I've got a I've got a barrel in the shed, it all goes in there, and then once it's done on the fire pit. Mark will come around and they go, Why is that in there? Don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> That's why ours was number five. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was because the first one I turned, I looked at it and I went, I like the shape. You know, I, uh, I'm trying to think what wood it was, I can't remember now. Um, but there was a couple of imperfections in there that I could feel, and I thought, well, if I can feel them, Chris is going to certainly feel them. So it went on the fire, and I started yeah. again because <laughs> I wasn't happy to give it to someone knowing that I wasn't happy with it. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah it's the right frame of mind to be in yeah. there. yeah it's it is interesting isn't it it's i think do you know when we talk to people i mean i i feel like i know you quite well because um we sort of we've, we've met, met you we've met and yeah times, um, obviously i you know i emailed you oh, i'm getting to be my eyes call um I, we've we've met and i talked to you about the bowl and everything um and yeah i kind of feel like I, we know you quite well really but it's just getting a slightly different view as well and just sort of mm -hmm. knowing a bit more about you as a person and 
um that's why it's so good just having these little chats and just appreciate when, when you put the picture up on um social media this morning and me when i met chris at makers and give him the pen yeah um chris is such an inspiration to me um i love watching his videos what he does um interacting with people it's quite darkness you can't actually see it but on the wall in the workshop i've had that done as a picture and it's framed so there's me and chris on the wall in the workshop oh right <laughs> good mate yeah it's good for darts practice <laughs> no you, there's me and chris and then underneath um i come second in the club's intermediate um no beginners competition which put me into an intermediate this year all right okay. but obviously being in plaster and then being ill yeah i've not entered any competitions this year so i'll be standing as an intermediate but i'm quite happy do you know mm. i don't think i'm ready to move up yet yeah um i'd like to get out there by earning getting up there my turn and improving yeah and um, we've got a december is a surface enhanced piece mm. so i've got something in my mind that i want to do um how it's going to go down at club i don't know because it's not going to be a bowl it's not going to be a pot mm. um i quite like watching wayne the woodturner's bits so i'd like to have a go at a bit of wall up mm -hmm. i don't know what people are going to think but do you know what do i care no i've enjoyed mm -hmm. doing it yeah, yeah give it a go if it yeah. doesn't get any points it doesn't get any points it'll be like eurovision i'll get nil pot <laughs> yeah yeah well it's your your project your take on it and that's for me that's the most important thing i think it's it's much better to stand out by doing something different than mm. just be a clone of what other people are doing so yeah i hope you'll post some pictures of that when it's done and then we can have yeah, a look well, I, I can have a look yeah. anyway yeah you can describe it to me <laughs> yeah <laughs> because it's a competition bit it can't be done until it's been entered so yeah I mean, it's the first of december is a competition so right okay after that no yeah i'll put yeah. some pictures up well we'll look out for that okay. so um tell us where we can find you where can people find you oh so, um obviously facebook um i've got my facebook page blue light turner instagram has just gone nuts for me um i've gone from having like 20 followers to over 500 followers now so yeah. blue light turner um twitter i'm on but i don't use it that much and then obviously my youtube channel um i think there's five videos on there at the moment um i am trying to get some more done i've been told i've got to do a christmas themed one by my daughter mm -hmm. um they're all the c words going mad now so <laughs> There's 12 of them in their flat at uni and they all want a wooden Christmas tree. So oh. I think I think one of those might be a video. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah. Um, I haven't quite got my website happy with yet, so that's not published. Mm -hmm. okay. But that will be coming shortly. Excellent. Awesome. Well, do you know, it's been really nice talking to you. Thanks for having um, me on, guys just hearing a bit more about your wood turning and what you're doing and what you want to do um so yeah it's it's been really nice talking to you thank you so much for being oh, on with thank us you. yeah no it's been it's been a pleasure and i'd just like to i'd like to say not only keep on turning but keep on doing what you're doing and keep on saving lives mate yeah yeah, yeah. cheers chris yeah it's a hard job someone's got to do it but you know what That's i right. love it every day is different and yeah. you meet so many different people I no, feel privileged to do it. Yeah, you're making a real difference to yeah, someone's life. Yeah. So. Yeah, and also all the you know the charity things that you do as well. Mm. You know that has a massive impact too. I had my first pop up date on uh, the guide dog we're sponsoring at the moment the other day, so that was quite mm. nice. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, so I can just hear B dog in the background. Oh, <laughs> here he is. Yeah, I think he's he's been in his bed. Yeah, he's doing chunk. with all these problems. He's here now. <laughs> Hiya, Bamba. You all right? He, Wayne, you come and say hello. Come and say hello. Come and say start. hello. So, <laughs> so, yeah, this is uh, this is my older brother, Wayne. Hi, everyone. So, Hiya, Wayne. Hiya. So, yeah, he's uh, he's up from Hereford. That's where he lives, Ross-on-Wye, that way. 
so he's up with Henry. Henry's still downstairs, glued to YouTube, is he? He's got Minecraft on. Yeah. Oh, he's got Minecraft <laughs> on. So yeah, Wayne. What else would kids be doing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Wayne is uh, not only is he academic and technical, he's an architect. All right. Well, it's a podcast, isn't it? You okay, got to tell yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, he's uh, not only an academic, he's an architect. Uh, he's a member of the British Institute of Architectural Technologists. You're an associate partner at the practice that you work for. Yep. Uh, but he's uh, a great tinkerer. Always, he's trying to convert a, a Mark One VW yeah. LT35. Yeah, well, we're storing it back to a camper. So uh, he is a maker. He's a tinkerer. He's a great mechanic, and you can sort of like turn your hand to most things. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, I forgot more than he knows. Yeah. Not wood turning. I'm to you. You're an expert. Too. So uh, yeah. Anyway, get him in the workshop, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's been in today. I've I've turned a magic wand for Henry today. Talking of wands, so uh, they were they were in and they were sat down having a brew, uh, watching me turn while I did the wand. So uh, no, it's cool having him here. He's here all week, and you're off back on Saturday. Aye. Aye. So no, we're having we're having a giggle and uh back to the floods. Yeah, back to the full yeah, Hereford's completely flooded out really. So uh, I noticed yeah. um I went to pick my daughters up from uni earlier on hmm. and I come back through uh, a little village um by the Amblin Museum where I demonstrate quite a lot and the river there's just totally gone. Hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. I didn't think we've had that much rain. No, no, it was um it was it was uh, six weeks worth in two days. So the River Y in Hereford was six over six meters above its normal level. So it's completely wiped out care homes and everything. It's 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 the worst one since ninety eight. Yeah. So, so I like, came here at a good time. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> yeah. we've not had anything like that. We've had some bad rain, but Nothing. we've not had any floods, have we? Not not on not on the biblical scale no, like happening no. elsewhere. Uh, so we we haven't had anything like bit of surface water but nothing like that yeah 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 so cool well as you know um you're very welcome to stay with us whilst we have our little chat about what we've done this week um but thank you so much for being our guest on make a monday with us today yeah thanks a lot no, thank you guys so yeah uh feel free because we are going to uh be talking uh because it's halloween we're going to be talking hopefully uh, about things that go bump in the night so if you've got any good spooky stories or you've had any experiences along those lines yeah uh, yeah jump in yeah, no, I'll, um, I'll hang in yeah I'll really right. turn this off and it'll make it a bit spookier in here yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs>